This is RG Reviews, and today for you guys, I've got Minifigure Monday, number 21, and our subject, of course, is none other than the infamous bounty hunter, Boba Fett. I got a quick note here before we begin. This Thursday, I'm going to be having a live stream, so if you want to tune in for that, I'll be putting up a video, I believe, tomorrow uh, with more information. It's going to be, like, Thursday night, so, uh, yeah, check your calendars, I guess. But without further ado, let's uh, get right into the minifigure itself. So... This is the old Boba Fett. Uh, first came out in 2000. Yeah, it's weird to say. And uh, yeah, so pretty simple. Uh, he had like the old gun going on there with the stud. Just simple gray legs and arm pieces with dark gray uh, hands and then a brown uh, like belt sort of piece. But then this is when they kind of printed a cool little torso that captured Bo uh, Boba Fett's uh, Mandalorian chest piece. And then uh, his helmet here. It's all one piece, as you can see, kind of like the Snowtrooper helmet. And, uh, yeah, it's actually uh, was one of my favorite things when I was younger, until they came out with the newer one. So, yeah, the old Boba Fett only has a black head, because eyes, that's extra printing and extra money. But that doesn't seem to be a problem anymore. And then there's some printing. It's one of the best printed uh, head pieces, I think, for the time. And then the back, we got the jetpack, so we'll turn that around pretty uh, simple and uh, elaborate yeah sadly it was only one color but yeah and then uh, of course there no back printing because it's so simple and it's covered up anyways so yeah that's the Boba Fett from uh, 2000 and this character has been featured in set number 7144 slave one and uh, in set number 3341 in uh, like a magnet set I believe Star Wars number two F. and then uh, also uh, the young Boba Fett, I don't have him, but like Boba Fett when he's with like the short legs, um, was featured in 2002 in set number uh, 7153, and it was Slave 1, except it was blue, painted blue, Jango Fett's edition. I really want to get that one eventually to show it off. And then uh, this one, this version here, was uh, re reappeared in 2003 in set number 4476 in Jabba's Palace. And this version again also, well, a variation of this version showed up in set number uh, 10123 in 2003, the Cloud City. The only difference is that he had arm printing and leg printing, and it's phenomenal for that time. It's kind of like this guy who's coming up in a bit, but yeah, this guy doesn't even have arm printing, so yeah, he's very rare. Um, that set's pretty expensive. And then uh, in 2006, another character came out just like this one except uh, some of the coloring like the green was updated to be lighter and more correct I guess and he was in set number 6210 Jabba Sail Barge and also in set number 6209 uh, in Slave 1 and this was the second Slave 1 so it was just an updated version of his bounty hunter ship and then uh, in 2010 four years later set number 8097 came out and it was another Slave 1 the third one so lots of Slave 1's and then in 2012 is when, like, uh, or sorry, 2010, they uh, updated Boba Fett to sort of a version like this. But in 2012 is when uh, they came around to have this Boba Fett. Oh, Andy flew off, but uh, the newer Boba Fett. And he came in set number 9496, the Desert Skiff. So, uh, <clears throat> sorry. He uh, also came in set number uh, 75023, the Star Wars Advent Calendar, in 2013, but that was a youth one of him. Let's see if we can get a better shot of this guy. Do, 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 do. There we go. And uh, that was 2013 when they came out with the Christmas version of him. And uh, yeah, let's go over the 2012-ish version. So basically the 2012 version has some very nice leg printing, cool updated blaster, and very nice torso printing for when compared to this Boba Fett. You can just tell the difference there. A lot more detail. Uh, this time he's got a, like a light, lighter like cyan, cyan color I believe. Uh, arms and then he's also got a little uh, sort of cape going on there, like half cape thing that looks cool. And then he's also got a rounded helmet, so it's not like square. And then he's also got a little uh, rangefinder on it, viewfinder. And then also back with. Uh, a jetpack again, only one color, and back printing. I don't believe there's any. We will go for the view if his head will come off. Nope, no back printing. Same as the other one. Boba Fett doesn't need back printing though, because he's got so much going on in the front. And then here is Boba's face. Of course, he is a clone. 
but he looks different. Got a little more scruffed up and some battle scars from all of his adventures as a boba, uh, as a bounty hunter, as a boba bounty hunter. And the red, I must say, on his mask is like really good, like very good detail. Now this figure has been sort of the one that they've been using since then, and I believe the last well, the set he's appeared in was that uh, uh, Desert Skiff. So he might have came out. No, yeah, that was it. So um, he also uh, there's different variations like promo figures and stuff of him. And he came out in 2010. There was a white Boba Fett one gave out, and then there was also two bronze Boba Fetts. Uh, the uh, white one, they look like this version here, in uh, 2010. And then two bronze ones. It was basically this, but completely bronze came out. And he also came out in gold, in complete gold and complete silver. And he also had a little micro figure from one of the games. And speaking of games, he was featured in all the Lego Star Wars games, Lego Star Wars the video game. Lego Star Wars 2, uh, the original trilogy, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, and Lego Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars. And for like Lego movies uh, that aired on Cartoon Network, he uh, was featured in The Han Solo Affair, of course, and uh, Bomb Bad Bounty. So now we're just going to go over some of their um, uh, film history. So here we've got both uh, the two versions that I have, the 2000, uh, 2000, 2000 to 2006 version on the left here, and the newest version from like 2012, 2010-ish on the right. So uh, Boba Fett himself was featured in episodes 2, 4, 5, and 6. And he was the only unaltered clone to, uh, clone that, that was out there, like the clones from the clone army. He was unaltered so Jango Fett could have him like a son. And uh, Jango Fett's a bounty hunter and taught Boba uh, all of his uh, bounty hunter, everything he knew and kept it in a book until he died at the Battle of Geonosis, which uh, he uh, Boba watched. He watched Mace Windu cut off uh, Jango Fett's head, so that was kind of hard for him. But he was very active during the Clone Wars, and uh, that's when he refined his skills and started making uh, like acquaintances and uh, partners that would help him out in the future with his uh, bounty hunting uh, job. He worked uh, with Bosk and Aura Singh. Uh, they were mentors to him. And it was either because they knew he was worth a lot or just because they owed his dad a favor. So one of those two. And one of his main goals during the Clone Wars was to get revenge on Windu, which he attempted multiple times. I just recommend watching the Clone Wars TV series, the animated one that happened uh, recently, that they recently ended, because it just goes over. Uh, you can see Boba in there throughout, just thrown in there at random times, and it kind of gives you a background on what was going on through there and uh, he's just doing random jobs and then after doing uh, the Clone Wars and all that and working for um, Vader in that he uh, eventually ended up becoming one of Jabba's main bounty hunters as you can see in the background in many of the scenes where he, he's at Jabba's palace and uh, that's when he was uh, hired for ca the capturing of or the bounty of Han Solo and he was actually the one that captured him on Cloud City so he was pretty uh famous or looked up to for that um, awesome feat. And, uh, yeah, it took a lot of skill, I guess. Apparently. It didn't seem like it, but it's, uh, Han Solo. And then, um, his end, end, quote in quotations, he was eaten by the Sarlacc. He was knocked into the pit by Han Solo, ironically. But, um, he actually survived because of his armor, his Mandalorian armor. He was able to survive. The Sarlacc couldn't digest him, and he had a thermal detonator, and was able to crawl out, and actually he was um, he was married. He got married um, during some t period, and he was married to Sintis Vell, and uh, she she was also a bounty hunter of some sort, so not a stay home mom or whatever. And I don't believe they had any kids, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. And uh, just some of his acquaintances was Tan Wee from Camino, one of the Caminoans, Caminoans, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, Zam Wessel, the bounty hunter, Jango Fett, of course, is father, quote-unquote father, Aura Singh, Bosk, Dengar, Vader, Jabba, Han Solo, I guess. So yeah, he's famed around the galaxy for his, uh, his great bounty hunter work, and I have to say, he has one of the best bounty hunter outfits I've ever seen. I mean, compared to what else has been shown in the Star Wars universe, I must say. And the detail on this 2012 figure is amazing, so yeah. This has been uh, Minifigure Monday number 21. Thanks you guys so much for watching. This has been Archie Reviews. Have an awesome day.